Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is part 2 of Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 4 Specimen Paper 4 Examination in 2020. Question 4. The 4 o'clock plant Mirabilis jalapa can have flowers of 3 different colors as shown in figure 4.1. The colors are red, orange, and yellow. Part A. A student crossed some red flowered plants with some yellow flowered plants. Cross one. She collected the seeds and grew them. All of the plants that grew from these seeds had orange flowers. Complete the genetic diagram to explain the results of cross one. Parental phenotypes and genotypes are here, and we need to fill in the gametes. Well, we just need to put in one gamete, so it will be R and Y here. For offspring genotype, it comes from both parents, so it's RY. For offspring phenotype, the question said all the offspring were orange flowers, so it's orange. This diagram is very common in genetics questions, and it's almost the same diagram every time, so memorize this format and you'll get your marks. Part B. The student then carried out three further crosses as shown in Table 4.1. Complete the diagram by writing in the genotypes of the offspring of crosses 2, 3, and 4, using the same symbols as in the genetic diagram in part A. Let's first write down the genotypes of each plant given here. For offspring of cross 1, it will be RY. For red flowered plant, it's RR. For yellow flowered plant, it's YY. All this information was given in the previous question, so let me show you how to do some working. Cross 2, offspring of cross 1, and another offspring of cross 1. That would be RY and RY, resulting in RR, RY, RY, and YY. The answer is RR, YY, RY. Cross 3, offspring of cross 1 and red flower plant. That would be RY and RR, resulting in RR, RY, RR, and RY. The answer is RR and RY. Cross 4. Offspring of cross 1 and yellow flowered plant. That would be RY and YY, resulting in RY, YY, RY and YY. The answer is RY and YY. Part C. Flower color in M. jalapa is not an example of the inheritance of dominant and recessive alleles. Explain how the results of the crosses show that the alleles for flower color are not dominant or recessive. If these flowers had dominant or recessive alleles, there will be no mixture of colors like red and yellow producing orange. The offspring will be either red or yellow, the exact same trait as one of the parents. So we can say phenotype of RY is different from either parent. Also, the phenotype was a mixture of two colors and not the same as the parent's colors. Another result that proves this is that if these were dominant and recessive alleles, the offspring of cross 3 and 4, the one we just did, would give one phenotype only because there will be no such thing as RY but just RR and YY. But here we got two phenotypes each, meaning that these are not dominant or recessive alleles. Part D the flowers from M. jalapa were cross-pollinated. Explain the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is when you pollinate between different flowers and self-pollination is when you pollinate within the same flower. In the case of M. jalapa that we just discussed above, yeah, it was between two flowers, so it's cross-pollination. You may also add in the definition of pollination to your answer just to be sure you have more than enough points to get full mark. 
Part E. Some plant species are self-pollinated. Discuss the long-term effects of self-pollination on the evolution of this plant species. Four mark question, so we need as many points as possible. So when the plants self-pollinate, they are reproducing the same genes again and again. Therefore, there will be no variation and the offspring will become homozygous over time, meaning having one type of allele. While if there are any variations, that will be due to random mutation, and we know that mutations will be passed on and expressed in the next generation, overall making it impossible to have any variation. So what happens when there is hardly any variation? The species will not be able to adapt to change in the environment, and if there is any new disease spreading, they will not be able to resist it, lowering the chance of survival. This question can be asked in a different format, but the answer is always pretty similar to this. Question 5. Penicillin is an antibiotic produced by the fungus Penicillin chrysogenum. Figure 5.1 shows the process used to produce penicillin. You probably have seen this diagram before in your textbook, if not learned in class. Just a brief explanation. The stirring paddles in the middle are constantly rotating inside the fermenter to mix the contents evenly. Fungus and nutrients and acid or alkali will be added according to the requirements through these passageways. Temperature monitor and pH monitor are there to make sure the condition is ideal. Cooling water is supplied around the water jacket to control the temperature and sterile air is supplied and extra gases are let out through this gap. Then, when the solution containing penicillin is made, it's purified by filtration, and the filtrate is collected here. Part A. Explain why there is a water jacket around the fermenter and why acids or alkalis are added to the fermenter. We have a huge space to write our answers, but don't worry about it, we always have more than enough points. So why do we need a water jacket? Like I mentioned, it is to control the temperature. As long as we put in the water with temperature that we want, we can maintain the temperature of the fermenter. Well, why do we need to maintain the temperature? It is because the enzymes and proteins here are sensitive materials and they may denature if the temperature is too high. Also, the fungus inside will respire, which will release heat as a result and this will increase the temperature. This may kill the fungus itself, producing no penicillin, so we use cooling water to keep the temperature constant. What about the acids or alkalis added? They are to maintain the pH of the fermenter. Remember, enzymes are super sensitive and the rate of reaction will depend greatly on the pH. At certain pH, their activity will be at maximum and will give maximum yield as a result. Here are all the points you need and other than the water jacket and acids or alkalis, it's good to know the function of other features as well. Part B. Figure 5.2 shows the mass of fungus and the yields of penicillin during the fermentation process. State the time interval over which the fungus grew at its maximum rate. The graph representing the fungus is this, so if we take a look at this, we can see that this part of the graph is the steepest, meaning it grew at its maximum point. So the answer is from 40 to 50 hours. Next, as the fungus grows in the fermenter, the nuclei in the fungal hyphae divide. State the type of nuclear division that occurs during the growth of the fungus in the fermenter. It's mitosis because it's related to the growth. Part 3. Explain why the growth of the fungus slows down and stops. Back to our graph, 
you can see that it is increasing from the beginning but it slowly stops and becomes a horizontal line and finally stops. Why is that so? There are many different reasons for this. First of all, it is because all the nutrients may have been used up. Unless we are constantly providing all the necessary substances, the reaction will end one day. Also, some of the waste products produced may be toxic to the fungus or the enzymes. Once these build up, it will stop the growth. Another possibility is that the penicillin could inhibit the growth of the fungus or the population have reached its carrying capacity, not able to allow more growth of fungus. Part C. Penicillin is not needed for the growth of P. chrysogenum. State the evidence from figure 5.2 that shows that penicillin is not needed for this growth. From the graph, we can see that penicillin was produced from after 20 hours, the fungus started to grow. So during the first 20 hours, fungus was able to grow without penicillin being produced. Next. The people in charge of the penicillin production emptied the fermenter after 160 hours. Use this information in figure 5.2 to suggest why they did not allow the fermentation to continue for longer. This is a very obvious answer. For fungus, after 120 hours, there was no increase in its mass and for penicillin, it stopped producing more after 140 hours. So there was no reason to keep waiting for it to increase or grow. Part D. Downstream processing refers to all the processes that occur to the contents of the fermenter after it is emptied. This involved making penicillin into a form that can be used as a medicine. Suggest so why downstream processing is necessary. So this downstream processing is basically making a medicine from penicillin and we need to explain why this is important. First of all, when we get penicillin from the diagram above, we can see that we're not getting the pure penicillin itself. We already have some residue here and penicillin is in this solution. So we need to purify or separate the penicillin from the unwanted substances. Also, when we are making a medicine, its purity is extremely important because we do not want any harmful substance included in it. Same goes for food flavorings. Part E. Explain why antibiotics such as penicillin affect bacteria but not viruses. This question is asking about the activity of the penicillin and not really about the fermenter and its processes. Well, how does penicillin act against the bacteria? It will either target the specific part of the bacteria, bind to it and stop its metabolic reactions, or stop the cell wall growth. However, viruses have neither metabolism and target nor cell wall, making it impossible to be affected from penicillin. Antibiotics may also stop enzymes within the bacteria to stop working, but viruses have no enzymes. Question 6. Figure 6.1 shows a villus from the small intestine of a mammal and an enlarged view of a cell from region A. Part A. Name regions A, B, and C. Okay, so A is basically where the cells are located at. They are the epithelium or epithelial lining, which are at the outermost part of the villus. B is in the middle. It is the lacteal. It is a lymphatic capillary transporting substances to and from small intestine. For C, they are the blood vessels surrounding the lacteal. You can also write capillary. Part B. Explain why the cells from region A have many microvilli and many mitochondria. Alright, one tip. 
If they ask why a certain feature exists, you basically need to write down its functions. So what are the functions of microvilli and mitochondria? Microvilli are there to increase its surface area. Why does it need to increase its surface area? So that it will have maximum amount of absorption. Also, they assist diffusion and active transport into villas. For mitochondria, their function almost anywhere in the body is to carry out respiration. As a result, you'll get energy or ATP which can be used for active transport. Alright, that's the end for this video. Hope this was beneficial to you guys. Thank you for watching and subscribe to watch more past paper tutorial videos in the future. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye.